Hey, good evening, guys. Dexter and Tanya Scott here. We are the Upgraders. So welcome, welcome. Come on in. So look, we don't know where you're watching this broadcast from, but we'd love to have your comments, whether it be uh, on Facebook or YouTube Absolutely. or even on our podcast, right? Come on in, the Upgraders podcast on Apple. Uh, come on in. We're going to talk about an amazing topic, man, because, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an abundance, uh, a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, we think it's phenomenal, especially phenomenal in this time that we're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the upgraders, we always talk about mindset development and we like to dig deep. So maybe we'll, we'll dig a little deep uh, with a short time we'll be with you. <laughs> we're going to make it short, time? right? All right. So I'm gonna go, let me go share this to my page. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Again, welcome. Thank you guys so much, so much, so much. Um, and I'm going to tell you, we were just kind of in conversation a little bit earlier and I was saying to Dex, just talking to him myself, whenever we get to see things, we take it, we digest it. And this was one that we were just uh, remembering even, but it had some really good reminders in there for us. And we just wanted to come here and just share a little bit with you. Can we talk a little bit? We do want to talk about the differences in the mind. Prior to coming here, I asked the question. I said, you know, if someone were to ask you if the glass were half, well, if someone were to show you a glass, yeah, right? and then what would you say? Would it be half empty to you? Would it be half full? Yeah, and I think we'll use this as an analogy. So, so Tanya said, do you see this? It's a little over halfway. Uh, but this is really serious. So we've all heard heard that that statement, yes. right? So do you see it as half empty or half full? Very important, right? Mm-hmm. It's, and it's not just it's not just face value. It actually goes subconsciously, mm-hmm. right? Which is which is deep. So yes, yeah. and I know for me. Uh, Many of you, you know, may have already heard my story, uh, some of the things that I've dealt with throughout my life. Um, and this is why this is so valuable to me. See, I was on the other side. I've been on that side of having a fixed mindset. How many of you know about the fixed versus the growth mindset? Okay. You know about that. I was on the side of the fixed. Um, my life, very low self-esteem. Uh, I, I didn't feel good about myself, critical of myself. Um, even now, I'm working on something to help other people. I want to ask you some questions. I'm going to put it out there later just to see if, you know, the imposter syndrome, do you have that? You know, mm-hmm. for me, even to have someone give me a compliment, it would be rare that I would say thank you. I would respond with what's wrong. They could say, oh, your hair looks good. I'm like, eh, it's dirty. I'm going to give you something about right. it that's not good, right? right? So where did all of this come from? You know, and this is when I oftentimes go into thinking about how things are seeded into your life. You know, throughout my life, I dealt with rejection, being picked on, being mistreated, you know, having a boyfriend break up with me in front of the school cafeteria where all the chitter chatter now turned toward me and, and the laughter and all of that opposed to where it was originally. What did that do for me? It actually deposited within me. I didn't want to be laughed at. You know, the feeling of that, I didn't want to experience anymore. So I grew up even to to put myself in a position where that could possibly happen. I avoided it, you know, and, and I can take you really deep into some things just to get you to think. And again, that's why being here with you right now. And just asking you that question is so valuable to me. And Dex, I'm going to tell you, it was times for me, I wanted to know, but how, how did it feel for you to be married to someone with low self-esteem? To, um, to, be in, to be the husband of someone who didn't feel good about herself. And it was constant. What was that like? Yeah, I know. It's, it's multidimensional. So guys, as, you, as you're listening to what Tanya just asked me, it's really key. Because uh, our, we deal with a lot of things with our spouses, those of you guys that are married. So it's two people coming together. So one person is going to have this type of mindset. The other person is going to have another. Well, for Tanya and I, and the question that she just asked, when you are uh, kind of a mindset that I have, I'm a very passionate man, right? But I, you know, there are things that really get me um, in action mode. Right. And I think most men are that way for the most part. But having a wife that has low self-esteem or had low self-esteem, it's like you want to cop to the rescue. Yeah. Right. You want to come in and say, I got it. And then you're trying to pull them 
uh, to a certain point, but it is a process. And we that's what we talked about last night. It's a process. So we're talking about abundance and scarcity. Yes. It's really a big topic. And it it's, is a big it's something topic. that can go, we could go on and on about it. Oh, it's really can. deep. Right? So we're just going to bring that to you. Abundance versus scarcity. This is something we saw a while ago. We would see it again. And it just kind of came back up for me again today, which is why I wanted to come here. And I want to say to you, even with me sharing with you a little bit of my story and the things that I've endured throughout my life. And like Dexter just said, what I used to have, I want to say to you, there are still times where things will rise up, but the difference is now I'm very conscious of it. Yeah. See, before I allowed things to tiptoe into my life over and over again, and I embraced it. See, now I'm in a place of really embracing the true I'm essence of who I am. Okay, babe, the true essence of who I am. And I want you also to be able to do the same thing. Okay. Are you hearing me? Because there are things that will come back up and I teach on this. I talk about this often. Um, as well. So if you, if you follow me, you honey, you're going to keep hearing it. Cause it's something that we have to get. But one of the thing that I, I have to do and I've learned to do is to take those thoughts captive. You know, the word of God tells us to do that. It tells us to, to take all thoughts captive, not just positive ones, not just negative ones, all of them. So if I do that, if they are thoughts, I want to keep, I take them captive and I store them within my being, within who I am, so that I can continue to think on those types of things. Come on, y'all hearing me? But if there are thoughts that I don't desire, then I need to know how to put them aside. I need to know how to renew my mind. You follow me? So what we want to do now is just let's get specific again into having an abundance mindset versus one of scarcity. And this is something, who was that, um, that our auntie gave you the book on some years ago? And this is when you were first in, Stephen, um, is Covey. It Covey. Okay. Yeah, Stephen yeah. Covey. And what was the name of that then? The oh my God. It was the something of the, I think it was like the high, seven habits of the it seven yeah, high, uh, of highly effective people, seven habits so, of highly effective people. Yeah. So he kind of introduced this to us years ago before it even made sense to us. You know, you got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at that. And I want to ask you something. What is it that you desire? Are you looking to have an abundant life? And I mean this in every aspect, financially, with, with your relationships, emotionally, whatever it may be. What is it that you're looking for for you? Because in order for you to see change in your life, you're going to have to be the one to change where change is needed. When you come to a place of understanding mindsets, what we're going to talk about, you're going to have to ask yourself some questions. All right. When we, as we discuss it, I'm pretty sure everybody here will say, hmm, and wonder, do I do that? How do I think? And if there's anything that you hear us say, and you say, you know what? I need to work on that. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you, as we talk about these things and you say, you know what? I, I need to get better at that. Or you're like, oh, I'm good at that. Oh, that's such mm -hmm. and such. That's what you need to do. Right. And I'll say this before we go into it. And this is something I've, I've learned and we all have to know is, it's okay. See, in my mind, I would think, why is it you shouldn't feel that way or you, you know, it's not okay for you to make a mistake or it's not okay for you to get something wrong. And I would be so hard on myself, but now it's in the place of like, if you do hear something and it's like, you know what? I, I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. You now have the ability to change. And right. that right there is what. I always say what makes us so powerful. Right. That God created us to be able to do that right now. That's good. Okay? So look, what I'm gonna do is uh I'll um uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get into this. So you guys really take this stuff in. This is free training, right? Tanya and I train on this. This is this is information that people pay for. And we decided we're gonna just mm -hmm. give it to you guys because the 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 whole idea behind this is either you have an abundance mindset or you have a scarcity mindset. Right. And it, it comes out in your actions. So there's a quote that I love. It says, you never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love for thoughts or things. And their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves. They follow the law of the universe. Each thing creates its own kind and it speeds over the track to bring its way back to whatever went out from your mind. See, you sent the thought out. 
So right now, you right now, everybody that's watching, everybody that's listening, you are and you are experiencing at the at this very moment a thought that you sent out previously. Could have been a thought this morning, could have been a thought an hour ago, but you are walking in a thought that you released. You never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love for thoughts are things and their airy wings. They are swifter than carrier doves. You know what a carrier does? They, they follow the law of the universe. Each thing creates its own kind. A seed reproduces itself after its own kind. And it speeds over the track to bring its way back to whatever went out from your mind. So boomerang. Yeah, it's a boomerang effect. It's a boomerang You're effect. walking in it right now. So yes. we're going to show you something. Yeah, we are. And yeah, even today, amazing stuff. I want you to catch something because this is what we were even talking about earlier today is a lot of times there. So hear that. It's it. Goes has speeds its way back. It speeds over the track. It speeds over the to track bring to its bring way its back. way back to whatever went out, out from, from your, your mind. mind. That boomerang effect is this. So think about thinking negative. Think about releasing things, releasing things about people. Those things come back to you. And see, sometimes people might think like, oh, that means other people are going to do the same thing to me. That's not necessarily it. However, you're going to think that way. If you're going to release it, then there's an assumption. Oftentimes it's going to be made by you that other people are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're finding yourself even in a position where you're constantly thinking people are against you, where people are talking about you, I want you to ask yourself, do you find yourself talking about people a lot. Right. Do, do, do you find within yourself that you're against people yourself? And so this is, I think I saw someone even make a comment of, um, uh, about self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this yeah, is, is, you know, um, so that you can be better, not so that you can be worse. It's not a nitpicking, you know, to, to put you in a position of failure, but it's actually growth. The only way any one of us can get better is to bring about the necessary change in our own lives. And when we are able to do that, that's a good thing. But you have to know and see it that way yeah. in order for it to produce in your life as such. It's good stuff. So you ready? It's good stuff. All right, you guys get Let's ready. Let's look at some stuff. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to pull up something. We're going to talk about it briefly. But this stuff is amazing. So let, let, let us say this too. Guys, I don't care what it is that you desire to do out of life. We don't care what it is. You've got to get your mind right first. And that's an area that people just skirt over. They skirt over it. Yeah. And so there's a, there's also a quote that says, uh, you take so wherever you go, you take you with you. So you can be here and then you can go there and you can go there and you'll still have the same mindset. So your activity is going to be the same. So we look at, you know, we went going out of college. People wanted to start their own businesses, right? So we left college and folks who had bad study habits in college, they weren't, you know, putting themselves uh, in the mindset to get it done, to actually act in that activity. They actually went out into business and it didn't work out because they took who they were. Mm -hmm. So it takes understanding of an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset and understanding what that actually looks like. And it's all mindset. It, it, is. it is all it, mindset. If you want to see, stuff. if you want to see a change in your physical life, in, in the things that happen around you, it begins with you. The change is you, you know? So what needs to change within you for you to see what it is that you want? Because mm -hmm. if it's not happening, then what do I need to do differently? What, how do I need to think? It goes back to the mind. And I love what you said, Dexter, because baby is so true. It's a matter of a lot of times we don't understand how important this right here is, but it's your powerhouse. Okay. It's your powerhouse. So right. you want to bring the thing yep. up? Or so you guys take, take a look at this. This awesome. is some amazing stuff. All right. Hey, you got your cameras. Take a picture of it. It's all good. If you're listening, uh, what we have on the screen is, uh, is a picture uh, of abundance and a scarcity mindset. So it's abundance consciousness. 
And then it's a scarcity mindset. Absolutely. All right. So I hope you can see it good. I don't know how big it shows up to you, but let's look at the abundance side and they're pretty much in opposition of each other. Um, oftentimes Dexter and I would even talk about the law of polarity. There's an opposite to everything. If there's an up, there's a down, if there's a left, there's a right. So even when we look at this, you're going to see it here. There's an abundant mindset mm -hmm. and then there, an abundance mindset. And then there's one of scarcity. So again, throughout our lives, if it's like, this is what I desire, but it doesn't seem to show up. Could this be why? Right. So now, on the abundant side, gratitude, we, we hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. We have a sense of gratitude, right? Or you have a sense of entitlement. So again, I want us all to look at that. Are you the type of person where when you really get up and you think like, man, I'm so grateful for this. Or do you feel entitled to a thing? Right. Do you feel like this, uh, hey, this is supposed to be mine kind of thing. Or are you more so grateful for it? There's a difference mm -hmm. in that. All right complimenting huge are you do you compliment people or do you find yourself to be more critical is there a criticizing that goes on more don't cover your face back no i'm gonna pull it back over in a minute okay okay there we go yes All yeah right. so yeah. that's good so are you able to compliment people from a place of authenticity that's big are you able to say man wow that's awesome that's amazing you mm -hmm. did that you mm -hmm. Hey, sis, you did that. Bruh, you did that. I mean, can you really say it from a place of authenticity? Because really, if it's not authentic, if it's not authentic, it really just in, falls. inside, yeah, it falls down. But inside, you're, you're eating away at your character. So you have to be able to be authentic with this thing. It's, it's really powerful. It is powerful. Look at the scarcity mindset side. It's just criticize. Criticize. Now, right. look at the one where it says top right here for us, forgive others. If I have an abundant mindset, forgiving. And, and we've even been talking about that even more lately. I talked to a friend of mine even the other day who really teaches on forgiveness often. But forgiveness but then the other side where there's a scarcity is there that we hold grudges. Mm -hmm. Can anybody relate? Yeah. And then, and for me, can I be, you know, people know I'm a transparent kind of girl. This is where I live pretty much much of my life through all the pains and the hurts as nice as Tanya is. But as soon as something happened, I'm, I held it. And you know what I did? I thought about it a lot. I mm -hmm. pondered on it. I wallowed in it. Can, can, let's let's paint that picture some more. It would be a matter of, <coughs> you know what that person has done, but then I have to sit there and watch you be all nice and chummy with them. And those types of things make me feel bad and worse. Now what did I begin to do? I found more wrong with me. Mm -hmm. What's up with me? Something must not be right with me because I held on to it. And then oftentimes that's when I, that people please and begin to really birth in me even the more. Cause now I just want to be like, well, let me just get them to like me because whatever they did, let me try. Let me do, I'm telling y'all it is torture. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know and, what? Yeah. and the thing that something is, I didn't realize I was being tormented. It, it, it became right. such a matter. It was just life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is just how it is. And you become a victim and all you're looking for is some do just just fix this for me and not just releasing. See, forgiveness is something that I tell people to. I said that's a power. God has given us the ability to do that. He's told us to do that. Yeah, and, in, and he says, and I don't care what happens, seven times seven, somebody, that one person can keep doing something over and over and over again, and we are to forgive. And a big part for me, Dexter, was he forgave me. With all the things I've done, you know, my, my issues, all of that. <laughs> yeah. But he holds nothing against me. And I don't ever want to be reminded of those things. Right. So then Tanya was like, and I'm not going to remind anybody either. And I've also come to understand that that's how I'm created. That's our makeup. That's mm -hmm. who we really are. Right. And I'm telling you, when you come to understand this, which is why I often talk about your identity, do you even know who you really are? How you have been created in his image. That's your identity. It is in you to be 
forgiven. It is in you to be positive. It is in you to give people the benefit of the doubt because you are love. Right. Right. That's good. And look, so so you guys heard what Tanya just said. Now, think about it. She said she started thinking that and feeling that way. Let's take it back to the quote. You never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love. If you're operating in an abundance mindset and you're able to forgive others, then you is going to boomerang back to you forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to be reaping the harvest of forgiveness. Now, Let's look at this. You never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love. If you're operating and holding a grudge, then you're sending that out and the boomerang is bringing it right back. So you're going to see more things of holding grudges. So I'm telling you, you have two, two, two decisions before you, either life or death. You, you choose. You know, Vic, uh, uh, I forget the quote, uh, Robert Frost Two roads diverged in a single wood, <laughs> and I, I took the one less traveled by. So what's the one less traveled by? Is it forgiveness or is it a grudge, right? Is it abundance mindset or is it scarcity? And one of the things that Tanya and I, we consistently are learning is we know when we're operating in a scarcity mindset. And the fact that our level of awareness around this stuff that we've been studying for years it's only helping us get better. So what we hope that you're doing as you listen to us and you're looking at this document is to analyze where you are on this grid. It's very important, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so let's keep going, Tanya. Awesome. So what do we have here? Give others credit for their, their victories. victories. Yeah. Opposed to taking all of the credit for their victories. That's you know, big. That yeah. is big. And that kind of puts me in mind of just leaderships, you know, as leaders. And, and when you have people that you're working with, even those types of things. And sometimes people can do things, but it's like, I, if, if you if you find yourself where you're saying, I have to have the limelight, you know, and, and, and my name needs to be called. It's just something to consider and to really think about because when you know, there's enough out here for everybody. That's an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. And we'll allow other people to have the credit for whatever victory they have. It's okay to have them cross that stage or be recognized and that post being made and the acknowledgement being done. And we just simply congratulate them and not have to find a way of saying, I did that before. Or I've done that too. Or I can remember when I, or I can't, that it, don't do that. <laughs> release that give it to them and just let them have that time yeah i remember uh one time we were at a church and um we were at a church and somebody had just ministered right and it was a great message and i remember this guy he was he, he was he, you know he was in the congregation and everybody was talking about how awesome uh the message was right and the guy walked up to me and we were talking he was like you know what I remember I spoke about the same thing at my church and boy, and he, he made the whole sermon that somebody else spoke about, about him and how dynamic he was. And I was looking like, Oh my, what man, what are you talking about? We're, we're not even it talking about even it, feel but good. yeah, it's ego. <laughs> it's, it's the ego it that wanted to bring it back. So the person that was speaking could not find himself to give credit uh, to the minister who had just ministered. And I'm like, man, that's a bad, that's a bad place to be in. It really is. But you know what? The hope of it all is recognizing through teachings like this and this document is that if you recognize I have a little bit of that in me, mm -hmm. like if you're on social media, right? And you see somebody else winning, you see somebody else doing something or, or whatever the case may be, if you don't like the post or if you don't comment on the post, just ask yourself why. And it's a, a myriad of reasons why. But if it's because you just don't like that person because they're, they're outshining you, right. then that's the problem, that's right? Good. Now, it, there are many other ways, uh, reasons why you might not do it, which and it's all valid. But if that's the reason, because you just don't want to give them shine, 
then that could be something you need to work on, right? Bring it over from uh, the scarcity to abundance consciousness, okay? Love it. All right, so let me blow this up a little bit more. Okay. All right, so we just got a few more minutes, guys. We just yeah. wanted to really we may share not this hit with them all, you. But like I hope, we hope you t did take a picture. Yeah. Um, What's that? Yeah. Read, read every read day? Read every day versus watching Watch TV. TV every day. Yeah. You know, that's a common one that we Absolutely. hear about. Again, a difference. So. Yeah, and Tanya and I this morning read a phenomenal a chapter out of a book that oh, we're studying. So good. And it was <laughs> amazing. And yes. we just talked about it oh. and we were able to really connect with the material. It was amazing. And throughout my day today, I've been able to recall it. It actually helped me. So it was a boomerang. It man. was a boomerang. Oh my gosh. See, yes, there I'm we go again. You. And I was yeah. just like, this was so good. So this is, that's key. Um, now this is a big one. Listen to this. All right. If you operate from an abundant mindset mm -hmm. you're gonna share information and data opposed to what is the way that they put it is to it, hoard information hoard information and data. wow so that's right here hoarding yeah yep. ask yourself that if you learn something new are you willing to share it with other people do you hold back on information because you don't want other people to know that's truly a difference right there yeah. and i'm i'm telling you this kind of stuff right here is key okay and there are a lot of things that we're taught as well because you know many of us you know we get trained we pay money we attend courses those types of things so in it, it's like you just don't want to go giving off everything that you've done away that you've actually paid for, that you've actually worked for, mm -hmm. those types of things. There's a balance here, but you definitely don't want to find yourself in a position where you're just hoarding information. I'm telling you that hoarding yeah. of a thing and just, and even in the word of God, it talks about that thing too. And sometimes we just kind of keep everything, not realizing that there's holes in your pockets. You know, so then you're right. grabbing hold on this stuff and it's just falling out, falling through. So the things that we learn, you're able to share. You're able, like we're doing right now. You know, these are things that we like, mm, we can get it and keep it all to ourselves. No, we need to know this. What is it that Dexter and Tanya want you to get right now? We want you to operate in an abundant mind, with an abundant mind. We want you to have an abundance mindset. That's what we want. They can hear me. No. Okay. No, we're good. You know, so look at this one right here. Uh, think they know it all. All right. Now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about That's that. That's good. Yeah. So uh, I'll bring it back up if we need to. So think they know it all. Tanya and I, if you don't know us, we absolutely love the Andy Griffith show. I mean, it, look, I we, you better we pay, tell them who've been getting on my we nerves. We pay for, yeah, so we pay for <laughs> Netflix and Tanya has, we have Amazon Prime. So we probably watch the Andy Griffin show four times out of a week. I mean, we get into bed at night, doo -doo -doo, it's Andy Griffin, right? So I turned on an episode last night and Tanya was like, oh my God, turn it off, turn it <laughs> off. Because Barney just gets on her last nerve. Why? He knows everything. I mean, one episode, Opie was talking, the the, new, the newspaper, he, he had a newspaper, he wasn't selling the newspaper. And Barney's like, well, you know, they, they called me such and such, uh, he, his article when he was in high school. And Andy is looking at him like, oh, you had an article? He said, oh, well, it was only the one publication. And I'm like, why do you, you have to know everything? Your narcissism and ego is just out of control. But Tanya, she'll get tired of it and want to turn. I can't deal with it. <laughs> right? So that's I'm one. laughing. And I love the Andy Griffin show, but I don't know. And, but you know what, Dad said? I've been noticing that. And I'm like, what's going on that here recently? You know, I'm like, I've had enough. And I really feel like it has much to do with growth. Because mm -hmm. when you, after a while... It's a matter of like, I don't want those things around me. So it's like, honestly, to hear it, it's like a disturbance <laughs> in my being. And I'm like, not now. Turn it off. That, I, I can't do that right now. And, and, and he did. He turned away from me. Yeah, I, I turned away from it. But I mean, so guys, you know what? A lot of this stuff, and I'll show it one more time, but a lot of this stuff is a mirror of what we all deal with. None of us are perfect, mm. but we all deal in some of these areas. Yeah. I mean, look, we all deal Let's with it. grow. So, yeah, the mess, the upgraders message is to grow. Look at, use this information as a tool 
to transform you from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. You know, a prime example, we have a tendency to think that all the money that there is, is all the money that, that we've had or have access to. When there are billions of people on this earth, right? We go after the same people. And it's like, that's scarcity all day long, every day. There's an abundant world out here. We just need to talk to these people about our product and our service. Tanya, we want to sell a book. There are billions of people that will buy our book. It's not just the folks that I know on social media. That's right. It's not just the folks that Tanya know on social media. Absolutely. There's billions of people that will mm. buy my book. And when we come on that side, when we come on the abundant side, we, we operate differently. That's key. Oh, we that's so operate true. differently. You do. Yeah. When there's we understand that there's an abundance Ooh. of anything that we ever want is out mm. there. So, is. yeah. So again, we don't else? want to hold yeah. you too long and just kind of looking at things. Let's go over here because a lot of times you can put so much focus on a side yeah. that you'll find that that's what you'll really start doing. Even though you're saying, I'm not going to have a scarcity mindset, but if you think more on this, sometimes that's what's going to come up. This right here is like, wow, that's what it is. Hmm. I don't want that, but put your focus over here. Come on. I hope you're hearing me. That's a major tip right there. Mm -hmm. Where you put your focus. Don't put your focus on what you don't want. You can be mindful of it. Oh, I see. Hmm. But now what is it that you should do? Because it's here. Set goals. Keep a to-be list. Set goals and develop the plans. Oop, I didn't make, mean to make it small. Continuously learn. Keep a to-do project list. I have that in my phone, every, a to-do list mm -hmm. that I'm able to follow. Operate from a transformational perspective. Transform. You know, and I, we talk about that often, be transformed by what? The renewal of the mind. But keep that before you. You see that? Um, set goals and develop life plans. This, can I, can I even say this? This is a millionaire mindset. If you want to know a commonality that people who actually have an incredible financial portfolio have, it's over here on this, the left side of this document. Know that. Ex uh, accept responsibilities for your failures. Oh, messed up. I respect. In opposed to trying to blame others for it. This is what you do. Mm -hmm. So grab hold of this. Make yeah. it a part of your life. Let this be how you go about your daily uh, activities. And you're going to see a change in your life. This right here is all fueling a renewed mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. Some okay? good stuff. There's some good stuff. So guys, hopefully, hopefully you got something out of what we wanted to share tonight. And it's, it's, it's the upgrade guys. The upgrade is necessary to get to the next level. Amen. We got to do it. Yep. It's uncomfortable. Absolutely. It can be, but we, we have to do it because it is what we're supposed to do. Now that like the part about continuously learning, you got your, uh, what's that? Your, your certification. Mm -hmm. Ty, see, okay. Throughout the pandemic, Tanya got her certification in Christian counseling. Mm -hmm. I got my certification in, in, in neuro linguistic programming. We are communicators. It's our past. Tanya and I have been speaking for well over 20 years, but it's so much more to learn. We want to be able to, to, to communicate to you better. We want to be able to speak to you on a cellular level where we create change, right? So it's not just empty words. It's the studying behind it that when we release information, we want it to change yes. you. So everybody that we've worked with in the past, everybody that we have given a piece of our knowledge to, it's because God blessed us to be able to get the knowledge to even share it, That's which is true. why we're sharing it right now. And what we do is consider it to be uh, seeds in the ground that will be watered. Amen. Right? Some What is it? Some water... Uh, some water, but God some, brings it. Some, yeah, some plant, some plant, some water, some water, but God brings the increase. But God brings the increase. So we, we right now, we could be the planter or we could be the waterer. We're only one of the two. God is going to bring the increase on this information because yeah. I'm telling you, it is life 
changing. It is. When we understand that we are in our own way. Get out your way. That's all. Right? That's what I was just We're, thinking. We in I'm our you, own you way. You have to get out your own way. Right. And yeah. Talk yeah. about it a lot, but we I, do. I, it's just who we are and what we bring. A lot of things you might hear, but I'm telling you, you're going to have to catch it. Right. Getting out of your own way. And I talk often of, you know, the enemy does come to steal, kill and destroy, but he goes after your mind. He doesn't yep. break your leg. You know, he doesn't cause things to not just work. Right. It's your, it's what you think about it. He goes after something that will co- possibly make you fall because it's going to attack your mind. So let me do this. Let me make this happen to him or make this happen to her because I know that that's what's going to get her. He does not want any one of you to know your power. He has, he does, he's, He's really weak. The only way he can get authority is if you give it to him. Mm -hmm. But when you know and understand your power, it freaks him out. It scares him. Mm -hmm. That's what he doesn't want you to know. And it all goes back to how you think. Mm Mm-hmm. It goes back to your right. mind. It, it, oh my goodness! I'll be talking Guys, about this on is, Friday during Black Woman Confidential. Yeah, it's all but right I, here. I'm telling you, it's it all there. exists. Yeah, it, it does. does. It does. And you know, this is an analogy uh, that we did last week. So I want you guys picture this, mm, right? Mm, mm. You're in your city. You're driving your car, and you get ready to get on the Belt Line in your city. So picture yourself behind the wheel of your car, and you're coming down on the off ramp. You punch the gas. You start looking to see who's who's coming. You put your signal on and you hop over into the lane. You're running about 70. You're just driving, right? And you get up behind this car, and this car, you you make a you you put your left signal on and they jump in front of you. And then you're like, who is this? You put your right signal on and they jump in front of you. And you just do this dance all the way down the highway. And you're just getting angry. You just, oh my goodness. Ah. I mean, you're just feeling that anger. And finally, you put your signal on and punch it. Punch it. You're, you're running 80 now. You're driving. And you look because you want to give them a piece of your mind. You want to flip them the bird or something, right? <laughs> and you look. And it's you driving the other car. It's you. You've been in your own way. The whole time. That was me. Get out of your own way. Come from a scarcity mindset. Begin to celebrate people. Begin to read more. Turn that foolish TV off. Get off of Facebook. Comparing yourself to other people. Know that no one is you. And that's your power. No one is you. And that's your power. Get off of Instagram. Yeah. Get off of all of this nonsense. On, watching all of this foolishness go on. And I, I'm, I'm thinking about the fact that you can watch television and watch somebody else living their dream and you sit on your couch watching them. Turn it off. Get out of your own way and go after what it is that you want and what it is that you desire. And it's going to come but you just got to be willing to put in the work. What do you think? I love it. All right. So we it. said we wasn't going to be long. How long have we been talking? This is 8, thir- um, eight. So, so, so those of you guys that are listening, we started at 8.30. So now it's like 9.09. So we've been, that's pretty good for us. Because <laughs> I know we normally go long. But I, I'm not yeah. making myself not say anything either. I'm like, yeah. that's, that's good. I pray that you got something out of it. Yep. Um, I say it all the time. We say it all the time because we... We really want you to come to to a place of understanding who you are. And I say it often, you know, the Lord tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And the biggest thing that I've learned is we don't understand ourselves. We don't understand our value. We don't understand our power. Mm -hmm. And that's why you hear me say you're a superhero and you have abilities. But if you're not mindful of it, you don't use it. If you don't see it as such, you don't use it as such. Um, And we even go back to the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863. But until they were told they were free, they were still enslaved. And even when they were being released, it was a matter of like, really? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, you're free. 
You have abilities, but you better walk in it. You better walk in it. That's good. So get to know you That's and good. do you. Be you. Be you. That's good, Tanya. All right, so guys, listen. Uh, we're Dexter and Tanya Scott. We are the upgraders. We may not know you. But we know what's in you. Question is, are you up for the challenge? We'll see you on our next broadcast. Take care. Good night, everybody.